Yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. They are confirming a fatality. How about Enrique? Oh, wow. Man. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We've already been going here. Noon Report Live. Noon Report Live with the breaking news. Good afternoon, one and all. Where's Lynn Miller? There's Pamela. Hola. Hi there, Anthony. Yes, folks. When we say Juan's on the go, 6.30, boom. On the way. Hi there, Lynn. I really thought we, we, we would have seen... Um, I thought they would have brought it up <laughs> while I was there. Silly me. But, again, nothing you can do. Nothing you can do, folks. Yeah. We are right there, as Juan said. My goodness. It was good seeing LB last night, wasn't it? Folks, Ladybug in all her glory. Yep. Big time. That was Ladybug that you saw. Oh, okay. So they've redone the page a little bit. Can I add another one? Do more than one? Oh, they're always redoing it. All right, we're live on the radio in one minute. One minute. <laughs> Thank you. I like these people sending me. As I've been there for two hours. Oh, okay. They started pulling it out. All right, there's nothing I can do. One cannot be in two places at once. All right. And then there's that. Thank you. Nothing we can do. Nothing we can do, folks. I was there this morning. We were thinking maybe later this afternoon. But apparently not. Hmm. Could take a while, though. Who knows? Listen, we'll, we'll see where we are in just a little bit. All right. Fluid situation. Crews have started to pull out. Appears to be a pickup truck. Okay. All right, folks, at 12.06, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show. It's AM 1380 and 99.9 FM. This portion of our program, I want to just um, check the latest because... It sounds like now we are hearing, so it's a pickup truck in the water in East Providence. I was there for three hours this morning, but now they decide they're going to pull it out. Okay. Oh, wow. I can see it. It's a black truck, as a matter of fact. Um, yep. They have the back of the truck. So it looks like it went just like that. You can almost see it. All right. So there's that. They've started to pull it out. I'm sure we'll have more footage of it. And there has been a fatality. So there was someone inside the truck starting to see the vehicle in East Providence. Yes. As they're slowly pulling it out. Looks like a small pickup truck. Some of the footage that I'm seeing. I, I don't understand why they couldn't have done this. This morning while I was on scene. Oh, wow. And you can see the figure inside the vehicle. Hmm. You can see someone hunched over. Not that I should be drawing attention to that. But, well, that is one fatality. Well, we saw the medical examiner. While I was there. Hmm. Two witnesses saw the submerged vehicle pointed it out to first responders. Bold Point Park in East Providence. They say in a truck, it's actually now, it was a pickup truck. 
and they are, as we speak, pulling it out. Hmm. Fired Fox News host Tucker Carlson wants to be more than a podcaster. He's spoken to Trump about a candidate for him and would forfeit millions owed in his Fox contract. So Tucker Carlson floats plan to host alternative GOB, GOP debate in post-Fox future. That's interesting. All right, let me just follow the, um, the latest here with the truck. What time is it? 12.08. Here's Alexandra Leslie. She's on. on um, I did see her there. All right. Well, we'll we'll follow that as it goes along, folks. We will follow that as it goes along. Um, let me just stay on track here. Right now, it's twelve oh nine. Let me check this. Twelve oh nine. Okay. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well, other people are putting it out there. I know some people are saying, please, yes. Okay. Oh. Okay, when did that person send that to me? 9-11. Meaning at 11 minutes past 9. All right. Well, there's definitely a body inside the truck. Let's stay on track here, folks. There's other news of the day, obviously. Right now, it's uh, 10 minutes past 12. This portion of our program, you know, I had a dream last night that the sun came out. But it's apparently just a dream. But it will apparently, at some point, right? My God, this weather is... This is what it's like in Seattle. This is what it's like. (laughs) No wonder they're all going crazy in the Pacific Northwest cloudy cloudy all day tomorrow cloudy cloudy all day saturday hint of sun peak of it or like a peak sunday cloudy all day monday sunny in 72 tuesday cloudy all day What a weather pattern we are in. However, at least it's still not dry, which means PR Landscape Materials and Garden Center, 3688 Quaker Lane in North Kingstown. Folks, family-run business, locally owned. They they run a great Facebook page. Now, and I try to tutor many businesses. Uh, You know what, actually, I'm going to use this as an opportunity. If you're a business, I want you to think of your Facebook page as it's your store window. And so I'm not saying every day you need to update. Like think of a department store window. That If you're a business, that is your Facebook page. So if it still says Easter, what, what does that tell the potential customer, right? If it still says 2022, what, what are we talking about? Think of it as like a department store window for your business. And someone that does it very well, very effectively, is PR Landscape Materials and Garden Center. 3688 Quaker Lane in North Kingstown. And I'll tell you why. Because they capture where they are right now. Right night right now and how many businesses if you scroll around they're still talking about easter (laughs) mother's day should be the next posting mother's day folks remember phone number directions people don't read so you have to make it as easy as possible and i'll tell you who does it pr landscape materials and garden center hydrangeas colors available blue and pink they also have pansy flats pansy bags and they also have Tropical hibiscus mandevilla plants, just beautiful. PR Landscape Materials and Garden Center, 3688 Quaker Lane in North Kingstown. I was there just the other day. It, it, the quality and the service, second to none. Located right off Route 4, 3688 Quaker Lane. 
in North Kingstown. It's PR Landscape Materials and Garden Center. Well, folks, good afternoon. <clears throat> and I only say that I have been, we, we went live at 7 o'clock. So the day has really already begun. Um, but check out the website, thepetro.com. We'll have that up on the website. We'll also have that we were with Ladybug last night, the return of Ladybug. It's all at the website, topetro.com. Brought to you by the Coesit Inn, 226 Coesit Avenue, West Warwick. Lunch, dinner, or as I like to say, drinks in the lounge for crying out loud. Oh, good. Thank you, Carmine. They're waiting for you at the Coesit Inn. All right, good. So a member of Team One is on scene. We will have video of that. That was quite the operation this morning. And then, oh, all right, excellent. So, um... All right, well, we don't need the Channel 10 version of it. Thank you. They're reporting now a body. Well, we knew that earlier. Thank you, Justin. Yes. Not trying to be snippy, folks, but we were reporting that earlier when I was at the scene and the, the medical examiner's truck showed up. So we don't know exactly what happened with that. Um, and then I have a bunch of other messages. Okay. Well, that's nice. Hey, listen, it is um, terrific. Yes, uh, there is a body in the truck. Um, no, thank you on that one. Just answering here. Do you want to get involved? Some of the Smithfield school committee, school committee. Nope. That's quite all right. Thank you. Um, hmm. uh, email is best. Yeah. Uh, someone asked if I have an anonymous tip line. You can't communicate with people through an anonymous tip line. And most of the time, the stuff, if it, if it can't be proven, like, what's the point? So, all right. So we will have video of that up. Um, it would have been nice to be on scene, but there's nothing we can do. And I want to address some of the, the other news of the day, folks, right now at 12.15. In fact, I'll, I'll do it right now. Um... Boy, Enrique got, he and I share a mutual friend. The Justice Department has secured sedition conspiracy convictions against Enrique of the Proud Boys. How? Holy cow. Former Proud Boy leader Enrique um, Taro, three other members convicted, plot to attack the U.S. Capitol. Keep President Trump in power. Jury in Washington, D.C. found him guilty. Seditious conspiracy. After hearing from dozens of witnesses over more than three months, one of the most serious cases. Whew. Seditious conspiracy conviction? Whew. Charges carry a prison sentence up to 20 years. Rico Taro was a top target. He wasn't even in D.C. that day. He led the Proud Boys. Trump, the Channel 12 story in this is actually kind of comical. Told the Proud Boys, stand back and stand by during his first debate with Biden. He meant to say stand down. Taro wasn't even in Washington on January 6th. He was arrested two days earlier. Separate case ordered out of the Capitol. Prosecutors say he organized, directed the attack by Proud Boys who stormed the Capitol that day. In addition to Taro, Miami resident, three other Proud Boys were convicted seditious conspiracy. Ethan Nordine, Joe Biggs, and Zachary Real. Joe Biggs, he was big with the Gavin McInnes crowd. Joe Biggs had a had a show. He had a show on that, like, get off my lawn. How? <sighs> Jurors have not reached a uh, unanimous verdict on the, for a fifth defendant, Dominic Pazula. He's the guy, former Marine. He's the one that took the shield and broke the first window. He is from Rochester, I believe. The judge told them to keep deliberating. Wow. Nordine of Washington State, Proud Boy chapter leader, real led a group chapter in Philadelphia, Biggs, self-described Proud Boy organizer in, uh, Dominic Pazula, group member from Rochester. <sighs> Prosecutors told juries the group ver viewed itself as Trump's army. They were prepared for all-out war. That, none of this is true. 
They were in the Senate chamber. They, they did not. Proud Boys were lined up behind Trump willing to commit violence on his behalf. Backbone of the government case was hundreds of messages exchanged by Proud Boys in the days leading up to January 6th. Proud Boys swarmed the Capitol. Taro cheered them on from afar, writing on social media, do what must be done. So what? Proud Boy encrypted group chat. Someone asked what they should do next. He responded, do it again. Make no mistake, we did this. Defense lawyers denied there was any a plot to attack the Capitol. And they failed. They were inside. You know, I'm only going to go a little bit longer here. Um, <clears throat> hey, it was President Trump that said fight like hell. Wow. The Justice Department had not tried a seditious conspiracy case in a decade before. <laughs> Excuse me. The jury. God bless me. Convicted. Stuart Rhodes of the Oath Keepers last year. Two Oath Keeper trials. Do you believe these people are still going through this? They're going to be in jail. Joe Biggs, forget about it. They're going to be in jail for a very long time. Wow. Huh. All right. Where else are we? Folks, good afternoon. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but wow. Convicted for Proud Boy, seditious conspiracy. Hmm. I'll tell you in, well, I could go on and on. I, I may do a separate show to talk about that, how the whole thing started. It's kind of started as almost like a joke. And it was, and then it just took off. Um, but that is very, very serious of what is happening. With uh, that, That's some pretty serious jail time. Folks, again, you know, not to relive, boy, there it is, head, headline on the Drudge Report, Proud Boy members guilty seditious conspiracy face up to 20 years. Maybe they won't get 20 years. Saw themselves as Trump's army. Wow. Huh. Well, they were certainly around in 2020. Now, I think it, it's really um, dissipated think it has tucker wants to hold an alternative gop debate that's interesting i don't know who would broadcast it but hmm. so maybe he doesn't go with anyone he just does his own thing all right let's stay on track here so obviously they'll um They'll get an identity with the East Providence situation coming up. Folks, 1221, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show. It's AM 1380 and 99.9 .9 FM. Wow. Boy, the Proud Boys got, whew. Boy, did they get hammered with the jury. But the way it was set up, listen, I'm just going to say this once. Most of you know where I'm going to go with this. I mean, we, where was all this the summer of 2020? As, as we've said. As we watched every major city under attack, violence, destruction, we, where was it then? Why was that okay? You know, the, um, the last weekend in May of 2020, they smashed all the windows at the Rhode Island State House. And the Rhode Island State Police, the Capitol Police, and Governor Mundo, they didn't do anything about it. They let them vent. They knew who it was. They have cameras there. They knew exactly who to go after. Right? They pick and choose justice. Much like when, when Lugo got attacked. You mean to tell me the state police couldn't find the guy in the orange Adidas jacket? He's picked out clear as day. His face could have been out there the Saturday after whenever that was. Last June. State police two weeks later. What a joke. Folks, this portion of the John DePietro show. Hey, listen. You want to improve your home or just the look of your business? How about J. Perry Paving? High quality, fair pricing, exceptional service letter J, J. Perry Paving. 20 years experience, commercial paving, residential paving, free estimate for any project. Call J. Perry Paving today at 401-732-1730. 401-732-1730. Letter J. J. Perry 
paving. You know, what a difference it makes when you have either your driveway paved or your parking lot paved or whatever. It makes a big, big difference in the appeal of your home. J. Perry Paving. Thank you, JR. Folks, call them today. Free, uh, free quote, 401-732-1730. 401-732-1730. And also learn the benefits of asphalt paving. Whether it's a brand new paving project or just a cracked driveway, J. Perry Paving. Hey, asphalt, affordable, smooth, safe to drive on, aesthetically appealing. Call for a free quote. Letter J, J. Perry Paving. Licensed and insured contracting company. They're the best. 401-732-1730. All right, it's 1224, and you're listening to The John DePietro Show on AM 1380 and 99.9 FM. Next hour, you're going to hear our legal expert, Attorney Tim Dodd, he's going to talk about the voter fraud in Rhode Island. He's going to talk about the um, latest Trump case that has been tossed out. We'll also touch on the Hunter Biden situation. He will, our legal expert, Attorney Tim Dodd, will touch on the, boy, the cannabis situation is all politics in Rhode Island, and it's a disgrace. I'll tell you, this governor, he is just so in over his head. Governor McKee, that's, he's, he's not up to the job. He's not up to the job. Uh, that's not who the people wanted. And it's, as I've been saying, it's going to be a very long four years. Simply because, you know, there's the old expression of, and they call it the Peter Principle. And that's exactly what it is, the Peter Principle, which is he was good as mayor of Cumberland. And he, I don't know exactly what he did when he was uh, the mayor of, um, when he was lieutenant governor, not a lot. But clearly not up for the job as governor of Rhode Island. And we're all going to have to suffer. And, and there are some people that deserve blame. And you don't have to look any farther than other Cumberland resident, right? His pal Pork Boy and those who allow a complete abuse of power by someone who was working on the campaign for McKee to remain behind a microphone. And I get all the people, I get it, people that say no one listens to him, that's true. He's got the lowest ratings, that's true again. But he was he was acting in a motion to block off the airtime that no one, it was, it was a McKee free zone. The governor was free during that time. So there was no one, there's no availability for someone else to make a case there was no availability for someone to make the argument for another candidate. Uh, the other candidates couldn't, you know, get on at that time. Uh, forget it. It, it. And don't even, it's not even a matter of unethical. It's, it, it's, it's another form. Let's call it what it is. It's another form of corruption. And in that, in that sense, it, it, it's media corruption is what it is. Um, Listen, Pork Boy, there's no disguise with, with that guy, right? Anyone that would back, um, okay, yeah, one person has died, truck body been recovered. It's someone that's reporting that. I actually saw her at the scene. It was like, I'm not going to say who it is, but um, tarps are now over the windows. Okay. Um, Everyone's standing in one part, and this one person, I won't say who, has kind of um, buck teeth. Like, walks past everyone and just starts, like, walking up. And then the police are like, whoa, 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 you can't. So, like, what? Are we, are we just, we, we like the view from here? God, I can't stand people like that. But anyhow, all right. Um, so they put tarps over the over the windows that seems appropriate all right well you know we were there this morning you can't be there all the time can't be there all the time now um i want to get to the other story and we are going to have i want to credit john brian representative independent who has spoken out about this voting situation and right now for whatever reason, folks, at 1228 on this Thursday, May 4th, I'm at a loss as to why 
the Republicans at the Rhode Island State House are basically sitting on their hands and not doing anything about the voter situation. Because what is, as I've explained to you, and I know in some, at times I'm like preaching to the choir, what is the point? What is the point? What is the point of people voting if it's a rigged game? What is the point? Does anyone really believe the Republican Party of Rhode Island should have had a press conference when the story was announced that they found, quote, five people they think may have accidentally voted twice? I mean, is there anyone with a brain that believes that? Anybody. And I know so many people are running around you know, 2,000 mules and claiming voter fraud. I, I, I was saying back in the summertime and in, in September and in November, there was no stopgap to check. I was tweeting about it and posting about it on primary day and election day. Where was the Rhode Island Republican Party? You know, and people ask me sometimes, Juan, how come you're not covering a lot of the stuff at the state house? What's the point if they're not even going to try? And that's for all of them. I wish them well. And I, I know the new chairman, Joe Powers. Where are they? Like, nothing else matters. What is the point of, of having a, a political party if the vote is rigged? What, what, like, what do you, like, that's the basic. There's other little stuff, you know, you want to focus on message and whatever, billboards and raising money. But is it a political party or is it just a social club? What are we to make of this? I'm going to tell you about it in just a moment. But folks, I want to remind you, the next time you have an emergency, at Med Urgent Care, two locations, Atwood Avenue in Johnston and also Post Road in East Greenwich, at Med, A-T-M-E-D, at Med Urgent Care, doctors and nurses, they have everything you would get and need at an emergency room, except the wait. Stop in and see them at Med Urgent Care. They are comprehensive outpatient health care individuals and families, cost-efficient health care alternative, hospital-based emergencies. The next time you need urgent care, at Med Urgent Care, 1524 Atwood Avenue in Johnston, 5750 Post Road East Greenwich. They're both open seven days a week. The Johnson location is right in the Atwood Medical Center. It's at, what, at Med Urgent Care. Well, folks, good afternoon. It's just now 1231. It would seem that they have now pulled the truck out of the water in East Providence. So, you know, that's not easy and, and nice. Um, good work by our first responders. I think they had to actually wait for the currents and the tide to slow down um, just a little bit. Why one-year extension for Ripta Avedesians being called a compromise? I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing with that. Um, does anyone think that situation is actually going to get better? Ripta is a joke. Ripta is completely, uh, it's all patronage jobs. Ripta is filled with State, uh, state police, as they are retiring and getting set to collect their pension, they're then, boom, getting slid over to jobs at RIPTA. Like, what are we talking about? I, I, I've known Scott Abedesian for 20 years. Uh, you got to know when it's happening, when it's not happening. <sighs> Person is inside a truck found in the water, Bold Point Park in East Providence. Divers were struggling with strong tides and currents this morning. Um, searching the water shortly after 5 o'clock, a vehicle had gone in. Well, they were right. Lieutenant Michael Raposo of East Providence. Police interviewed the two witnesses, saw it go in the water. They believed just one person in. So, And there was a lot there. Um, Providence, Warwick, Bristol, Warren, State Police, U.S. Coast Guard. I don't know. The State Police, then there... Marine van showed up a little bit later. Uh, but I want to um, touch on, as, as I mentioned, that let me, um, I want to go on social media. And, you know, this is where you can see 
where some of our leaders, folks, it's 1233. Stay with me now. But 1233, and I mentioned the story, and, and you're going to hear, you know, we're going to talk about it with our legal expert, Attorney Tim Dodd, um, next hour. But, like, this business, Rhode Island voter fraud, Board of Elections investigating double ballot issue. The investigation revolves around whether five voters in question. Is there anyone that believes there was only five voters? accidentally or on purpose cast an early in-person ballot and then cast an absentee ballot. He, one of the problems with the discussion on this, and that's why I like talking to Justin Katz, which we do our segment Monday's Politics this week, is, and he's the one that framed it. He said, you know, the people that are opposed to all voting regulations, they act as if Gee, what would be the benefit in someone cheating in an election? Right? Like they act like, gee, why would anyone want to do We know why. So they can win to be in power, to control money, to control power, to control jobs. There's a lot at stake. I mean, that that's ridiculous that that even has to be addressed. Gee, why would anyone want to try to cheat in an election? Five cases of double voting. But I'm going to go to the back of the article. You know, when I mention this, um, I don't see the secretary, secretary of state out on this. And then they have punted back and forth between them and the Board of Elections. This was on Tuesday. The Board of Elections voted four to two against supporting legislation introduced in the General Assembly Representative John Brien, independent of Woonsocket, that would reduce the early voting period from 20 days to 14 days. That's step one. 100%. And I am going to have him on to, to talk about it because I commend him. That's leadership. Okay? That's leadership. But do I really want to go on and have to call out some of the other members who, where are they on this? How come no one else is talking about this? Like, that that's, let me explain something. The whole situation with voting, folks, it's not part of the game. It is the game. It is the game. If you're losing on that, you know, where are you winning? Does does any of it matter? Does any of it matter if if they can cheat with the vote? And I'm going on to the Twitter feeds of all the quote Republican Party leaders, and I don't see anything about it. I don't I, like what, what is, how is that not a priority? I don't I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Um, you know, look at the lengths they go through in sports when they determine that the Houston Astros was stealing signs and then they bang the trash can to let them know when, you know, they had a, a camera out in center field that was zoomed in on the catcher. They knew when a fastball was coming. So they banged the cash, the uh, trash can twice. It, the Rhode Island Republican Party and some others, they, they're almost as if, gee, how would that help the Astros, the batters at the plate? How would they, how would that help them if they knew a fastball was coming? Well, they knew they were going to swing. Because you want to hold off on a breaking ball, for those that know anything about baseball. Right? Why, why, why do you think there was such a big deal with the Patriots and Spygate? Because they basically said the Patriots had their camera on the Jets in the coach's box where they were sending in the plays. And therefore, they could tell what play was being sent in. Think of the allegations of the 2002 Super Bowl against the Rams. Kurt Warner said it was as if the Patriots were in our huddle. Those were the allegations that they, they taped the Ram walkthrough the day before. I, I'm at a lot. Think of, you know, Brady and Deflategate. Why was that a big deal? Because a football that's just a little bit deflated is easier to hold on to. So, 
That's why it's supposed to be a certain weight. So I, I don't, much like, and again, I'm not going to go on and on here, but I think you kind of get the gist of it. But you, you go back to, you go back to the steroid scandal in, in, in baseball. Right? Gee, look at the size of Mark McGuire. Look at Brady Anderson. Look at Sammy Sosa. Look at Barry Bonds' head even got bigger. Gee, what advantage would that be? If, if, you, if, they're, if they are cheating in the election, what is the point? To me, the, the most important part of the Rhode Island Republican Party, and I know I, it sounds like I'm coming down hard here, but I try to understand. I'm looking at the Twitter feed for State Senator, uh, uh, Senate Minority Leader Jessica De La Cruz. Here's to making waves. May 4th, Rhode Island Independence Day. What are we talking about? How come there's nothing on voter fraud? If, if you don't have that, why, what, A, why would people run? More importantly, why would people vote? Why would people vote? You go to Twin River and you go to the blackjack table. You throw down whatever, $50. It's just your luck. You get an ace, you have blackjack. And then the dealer says, oh, no, no, no. This hand was 22, not 21. Are, are you actually going to play another hand? <laughs> and then you get, all right, this one I get 22. Oh, no, that, that one's 20. See, we, we, it's not always 21. We move it around. Who, who in their right mind would play? Fool and his money. That's who would play. If, if the Rhode Island Republican Party, who I have supported and I am friendly with, and try to give them, you know, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse is uh, about to have a Republican challenger. I plan to try to, you know, Give him some air time. We had to reschedule. We we're going to talk today, but I got um, off course with our Holy's Providence coverage. But like, what what exactly? If if you're going to allow them to have people vote twice, what I I mean it. Like, what is the point? What what are we doing here? Unless unless you want to be the Washington Generals to the Globetrotters. Because to me, it begins and ends with the voting. If, if the voting is not legit, and hear me out, folks, because I'm, I, I know some people aren't absorbing it, and I know some people don't get it, but I, I think it's valid that if the voting is not legit, then, then to me, like there's nothing more important than the voting has to be legit. You can talk about media bias, you can talk about money advantage. You can talk about all those things. But if one party, the Democrat Party, if they have people voting twice and you're doing nothing about it, you're raising no objection to it, I, I, I'm not sure what to make of that. Then you are the Washington generals. And I know that sounds insulting. I know it does. But if you're not fighting on the vote, what are the other fights? Because there's nothing more important than that. I mean it. And that's what I'm really trying to say at, at 1242 on this Thursday. I mean, in my eyes, there's, there's nothing, like fundamentally, if you're having a school election, right? I was elected president of my eighth grade class. Before we had to give speeches, before you hand out the, if, if you don't have a proper procedure, and everybody had to write who they wanted, or I think they handed out, whatever. But if you don't have that down, that part of it, then like, what's the, what good is the rest of it? The Rhode Island Republican Party, where, where is the outrage? Where's the press conference? Why aren't they in front of the Board of Elections? Why aren't they in front of the Secretary of State? Why aren't they talking about it? What, what planet are these people living on? I'll tell you, folks, again, but you have to ask yourself, is this really people who want to win? Is this really people who want to win? 
So of and he's not even a Republican. John Brien is an independent. He had been a Democrat. He's the one trying to stop the double voting. I think that's fantastic. But why is he the only one? Where are the rest of them? God. So angry. And I will call them all out. And after, you know, later today, I will contact Barbara Ann Fenton Funk. I will contact Patricia Morgan. And here's the thing. Don't tell me that Kathy Gregg in the journal just didn't put you, it was Patrick Anderson, didn't put your name in it. Put out a blanking press release. What is wrong with you people? I like that crowd. You know, as I've told you, I voted. I did. I voted for Ashley Kalis. Anyone would have been better than Governor McGreed. I voted for Fung. I voted for Aaron Gukian. I voted for Pat Cordelessa. I voted for that James Lathrop. What, what are they waiting for? God. Five people? Oh, okay. Just five people. And I want to point out something that's really important. That's not even in the article. Why do we believe this only happened in the general? How come no one is asking the question, did this happen in the primary? <laughs> of course it happened in the primary. I was telling you last August and September, there's no mechanism to stop people from voting twice. I, I don't think people get that. You know, we're at a point where I, I think I could actually say that 100 times in a row. And people just... They, they're not absorbing it. They're, they're ill-equipped sponges. It's not taking hold. You could vote more than once. Last spring, last May, Susie Yankee, GOP chair, Jessica De La Cruz, had a press conference. You know, they actually, the media covered it. It was on voting. And I was like, Finally, they're going to shine a light on all this ballot harvesting in the fact that, as I've said, in Massachusetts and Connecticut, one person can only collect 10 ballots. Rhode Island's unlimited. Finally, they're going to put a shine a light on this and get us in line with Mass and Connecticut at 10. I mean, I'm against 10, but it's better than unlimited. What did they talk about? Well, in 1982, Buddy C. See, in the book, The Prince of Providence, Lloyd Griffin's, what, 1982? That's the example you come up with. Hey, why not go back to like 1792? In 1982, that's the example you use? <laughs> How about 2020? Oh, folks, this portion of our program, and it's brought to you by Falcon Pest Services. Call Falcon today, 401-739-1322. Residential or commercial, Falcon Pest Services, 401-739-1322. Serving Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Locally run, family run business. What do they do? They're the experts. They are the terminator. They're the terminator's terminator. Falcon Pest Services. Pest control services for termites, bed bugs, ants, roaches, mice, rats, mosquitoes, many other pests. Falcon, and they could do it for a multifamily housing, condo, apartment, single family homes. Falcon Pest Services. Call them today, 401 739 1322. 401 739 1322. Did I mention free consultation, special offer? Maybe it's once a month. Maybe it's one time only. Maybe it's once a quarter, once a year. But call Falcon, Falcon Pest Services. Now, you can find them on Facebook, and then they also are online, falconpestservice.com. Call them today, free quote. Listen, don't just think maybe the ants will go away. They won't. You know? Maybe I didn't see a mouse. You did see a mouse. Mm, there aren't that many. I like that one. There aren't that many roaches. It's not like they multiply or anything. Folks, call Falcon, 401-739-1322. It's 1248. Programming note, Cranston PD Live is 
Saturday night. We're going to try Saturday night. Saturday night. It's all right for fighting. We will be riding with Cranston Police on Saturday night. Are you going with them on Friday night? Saturday night. Saturday night. Are you going to be riding with them on Friday night? Saturday night will be Cranston PD Live. Uh, I need to learn more languages. I think that's what it is. I may try other languages. English isn't working. What night are you going with Cranston Police this week? Saturday night. Are you going to be with them on Friday? <laughs> I'll try to get the Spanish rendition of that. Whoever said there's no such thing as a stupid question? Folks, this portion of the John DePietro Show brought to you by pro no one that's ever dealt with social media. Hey, today was funny, though. When I was there this morning, the guy next to me said, hey, I recognize you from TikTok. People say, what are you going on there for? That's a Chinese platform. Blah, 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 blah. I, I don't believe that. Okay. One goes, you, 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 you fish where the fish are. We're building a big following on TikTok. It's all part of the master plan. Folks, this portion of the John DePietro Show brought to you by Propane Plus. He didn't say, it. I see, I see you, I recognize you from Twitter. He didn't say, oh, I, I hear you on, no, no, no. I know you from TikTok. Love that. I was, uh, last night when I finished, the guy said, hey, there's the guy from YouTube. I love that. That's a, those are compliments. <clears throat> Propane Plus, call them today. 401, means our plan is working. 401 885 4209 in Massachusetts 508 252 3359 for propane plus three generations remember propane whatever it is they're available to you residential or commercial you can count on propane plus for heating and cooling call them today at 401 885 4209 or Massachusetts 508 252 3359 for Propane Plus. Well, folks, good afternoon. You're listening to the John DePietro Show on AM 1380 and 909.9 .9 FM. By the way, next hour also, uh, you, I've had people say to me, aren't you doing the Canton story? Uh, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. A lot of smoke. Um, uh, just remember things have to be proven in court. I, I'm well aware that these defense attorneys, that they're, the Karen Reed case, they're, they're floating out a certain narrative. Um, there's one member of the media that is essentially just an arm of the defense team. I, I'm not, I'm not fully there yet. It could be odd, but I, I'm not... I'm not ready, you know, this whole thing of the Canton cover-up. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just not, I'm just not ready. I'm not 100% there yet. Put it that way. Dan McGowan has a good story. Will Fenton Fung challenge Mayor Hopkins in Cranston? Hmm, not tipping her hand yet. Barbara Ann Fenton Fung. Sounds like she's mulling a run for Cranston Mayor next year has scheduled a May 15th event at Cellos, begins to ramp up her fundraising effort. Hmm. Uh, Mayor Cranston, she would consider running. Hopkins says he has every intention of seeking re-election next year. He has just under 90000 in his campaign account. Fenton Fung has 30000 Folks, I mean, that is the beauty of Cranston. There would be a Republican primary for mayor, um, I, I listen, I know both of them very well. I would stay on the sidelines on that one. I would. I, I wouldn't count him out yet. He's pretty well liked. Um, I may, maybe she, I don't know what's going to happen with that. that. That would be an interesting race. I like BA a lot. She is um, she's a force, no question about it, but People seem pretty happy with Mayor Hopkins. They seem pretty happy with Mayor Hopkins right now. So I don't, 
I don't know if um I don't know if that's the right move, but we're, we're going to have plenty of time to go through that. So, folks, um, now I know right now at 1253 uh, on this Thursday, a number of you have heard that we had on the attorney general this week. I think Attorney General Peter Narona, I know a lot of people are not fans of his because of some of his positions regarding gun control. But as far as <clears throat> he makes a compelling argument that Delaware is basically the same population size and they have doubled the office. But something to watch is for Attorney General Narona to get what he's looking for. Right now, it does not seem like Governor McKee is going to amend his budget. So now, obviously, we side with anyone that's against Governor McGreed, who, I mean, the guy is just, you know, I mean, folks, if you think things are bad now, is there anyone that has confidence that Governor McKee could pull us out of tough financial times? I mean, the answer is nobody. And this war that he has going with the media, him and his pal Pork Boy, it's 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 going to end badly. Governor McKee, I want to remind people, he could still get indicted by the FBI. I want to repeat that. Governor McKee may get indicted by the FBI. Then where is he going to be? He's underground now. He's in the bunker now. He has no visibility now. I, unless he just finishes out the four years. Folks, this portion of the John DePietro show. Now, listen, it is tricky financial times, right? It is. Uh, as you're looking, half worry, deposits aren't safe. More banks are stressed. This is a time to reach out to our guy, Tom Bryan, Ameriprise Financial at 401-434-1510. 401-434-1510, Tom Bryan, Ameriprise Financial. Offices located 400 Massoid Avenue in East Providence. Take advantage, folks, of a free consultation. Now, right now, it's 1255 on this Thursday. Listen, I'm begging you at this point. At least make sure you're covered. And I want to be really clear about something. You know, you have to take action. You have to take, uh, protect yourself. You want to be proactive. I am offering you a free consultation with Tom Bryan of Ameriprise Financial. It's up to you to take advantage of it. Call today, 401-434-1510. 401-434-1510. Office is located, 400 Massoyan Avenue in East Providence. Listen, who knows? At least then you know you're covered. At least then you know you're on the right path. Tom Bryan, Ameriprise Financial. Call right now. Free consultation. 401-434-1510. 401-434-1510. Ameriprise Financial. Don't take any chances because you don't know where things are going to lead. But those are some scary headlines. And I want to, folks, Governor McKee has set up, I hate to say this, but he has absolutely set up the state to fail in, in a bad economy. He has. The state workforce is way too big. He blew through all of those, all of the COVID money. He has continued to make the state the most business unfriendly state. It is, uh, we, we are, but, but, but what I, with the Rhode Island Republican Party, in my mind, has dropped the ball, is that they're not exposing what I have told you. He's not who people wanted. People wanted Helena Folks. She won day of voting. One of the biggest problems we have in the state right now is the people that the voters want are not declared the winners of the election. In a perfect example, it's because of the ballot harvesting is Helena Folks beat McKee day of voting. Helena, folks, right now, on this Thursday, May 4th, she should be the governor of Rhode Island. She would have beat Ashley Kalis. Ashley Kalis should have been convinced to run for either lieutenant governor or secretary of state. Aaron Gukian beat Sabina Matos day of voting. 
the tall Republican. That's who people wanted. But no, because of McKee and the sleazy union deals, Matos won with ballot harvesting. And the biggest example is former Cranston Mayor Alan Fung. He, all the polls were right. The polls had Fung up by four points. Day of voting, the polls have never been more accurate. Fung won day of voting. He won by 7,000 votes. The polls were right on the money. But then the Seth Magaziner ballot harvesting stole the election. So people get frustrated. People say, what's the point? My vote is wasted. I wanted Fung. Fung won. He won day of voting. If they, If the Rhode Island Republican Party would just put in the cap of Mass in Connecticut will be Rhode Island Governor Helena Folks, Lieutenant Governor Aaron Gukian, and Congressman in Washington, Republican Alan Fung. And the Rhode Island Republican Party would be in a completely different place. Folks, here's what we're going to do. It's 12.59. I will be doing Facebook Live later, but we're going to break for the 1 o'clock news. Next hour, you're going to hear our legal expert, Attorney Tim Dodd. We're going to break down some of the big legal cases of the day. Again, it's the John DePietro It's a show on this Thursday, May 4th, AM 1380, 99.9 FM, next hour online. Right now, we're going to be back on the other side, but let's get you up to speed. Here comes the 1 o'clock news.